Hey fantasy football fans, it's me, the fantasy football girl, coming to you with another edition of Vlog Times. We're going to jump right into the best bombs and bonuses for week two, but before I do that, I want to give smwclothing.com a quick shout out. They actually provided me with the t-shirt I'm wearing right now. It says, more points please. Um, unfortunately, they only have sizing for men, so ladies, if you find your man, man's fantasy football addiction as charming as I might, you know I love those fantasy football guys, and guys, if you are finding your fantasy team easier to root for than your pro team, be sure to check out smwclothing.com. I want to take this opportunity to thank my viewers who tuned into the Fantasy Football Guys podcast last Thursday, it was episode 11, and I want to welcome any of the FF Guys regular listeners who are checking out my site for the first time. Thanks and welcome. If you did listen, you know we did a segment called Start, Sit, and Extra. My start for the week was Santana Moss. He had 10 receptions for 89 yards. He was the most targeted of all receivers by Donovan McNabb. And McNabb's numbers actually increased tremendously this second week. So assuming they can both stay healthy and McNabb's numbers continue to grow as his confidence does, there's no reason Santana's looks won't, receptions won't also increase and that he'll end up in the end zone eventually. In fact, if you had him in a PPR league, he was a pretty decent start this week. So I was pretty proud of myself for that. I wish he had scored a touchdown, but you know, beggars can't be choosers so much. Um, my sit was Mike Wallace. Oh, Lord, Mike Wallace. <laughs> he had two receptions for 25 yards. I hope you sat him. Dennis Dixon and now Charlie Batch at QB. This kid is just limited by his quarterbacks. If you really believe in him, keep him on your bench until Big Ben comes back in week six and assess the situation then. Otherwise, I kind of feel like you can drop him. Yikes. Um... My extra for the week was Matt Hasselback. He threw a couple of interceptions, which was by no means awesome, but he did have 233 yards and one passing touchdown, as well as one rushing touchdown that he ran in himself. So while he didn't put up Schaub numbers or Peyton Manning numbers or even Michael Vick numbers in week two, he did outscore Tom Brady and was a decent flyer if you had to fill um, you know, Cobb spot or Stafford spot. So. There you go, I was pretty proud of myself for my first run with those guys who know tons of stuff. They're awesome. I encourage you to listen to their podcast on a regular basis, thefantasyfootballguys.com, or you can check them out on iTunes as well. I'll be back this Thursday with another, with another start, sit, and extra segment. All right, week two, bust, bombs, and bonuses. My bust, oh, Sean Green. Where have you been? Where did you go? Um, I could have done this last Monday, but posted before the game. I actually was so disgusted by his play in week one that I benched him this week because I am a Sean Green owner. He had 15 attempts for 52 rushing yards, one reception for eight yards. LT saw the ball the same number of times and did significantly more with, with his time. So right now, LT is looking to be the, the better producer. Um, if you really want to hang on to Sean Green on your bench, which I think is what I'm going to do in case LT goes down as a handcuff, then certainly I encourage that, but don't start him. Just I, I, I don't think I have to tell you that, but don't start him and look at the matchups. My bomb for week two, CJ Spiller. I didn't really buy in the hype. I didn't have him high on my rankings. I didn't draft him on any team, in fact. Um... I just frankly thought that while he was talented, none of that was going to be actualized in Buffalo given the circumstances, and in fact, that's proving to be the truth. Unless Lynch gets traded or Davis goes down for reals, he's just not going to see the ball. That, that's, that you're not going to get any action. I mean, that's the truth of it. So I frankly think you can drop him. If you really believe in the kid and you want to hang, hold on to him as a handcuff again, feel free, but you know, I hope you have a really good roster if that's what you're planning to do. <laughs> Uh, my, my bonus for this week, it's like a running backs edition. I have Jason Snelling. Holy cow! Wait, I love it. I love it when p players blow up. It makes me so happy to watch people scramble to the waiver wire, which is what I hope you are doing if you haven't already done so. Pick this kid up. Michael Turner went out of the game with a groin injury. 
Doesn't look like it's going to be that serious, so I think he's going to be back for week three, but his backup, Jarius Norwood, has a knee injury, which is, which is looking pretty serious. Snelling had a monster week, 24 attempts for 129 rushing yards, plus two rushing touchdowns. As if that wasn't enough, he had five receptions for 57 yards and another touchdown. Fantastic. Pick him up, pick him up, pick him up. The burner is clearly dealing with injury issues. He's a great handcuff, maybe a bye week option, maybe even a flex. Definitely give this kid a look. Do not waste time. Um, that's it. I'll be back on Wednesday with week two's one for the money, two for the show, and three to let go. Enjoy the game tonight, and thanks for stopping by.